Ladies and gentlemen, let's for Gaming Tactical video. We actually have some concrete news on the GeForce GTX 750 Ti. We actually have the specifications, in other words, how many shaders it has, the uh, speed of the memory, and so on, along with some benchmarks that have leaked. Now, obviously, this isn't 100% confirmed yet from the video, but it does seem pretty damn likely. And what I'm going to do is put a link in the description. You can click on that, and that takes you to the article where I've compiled all this information. You can actually see a comparison versus other NVIDIA graphics cards, and you can also, of course, uh, see the original link which uh, takes you to where these were originally posted which actually or originates from China so anyway um, what do we get with the graphics card well it's pretty much what you would expect for a low-end slash budget card it's not going to be revolutionary but it is faster than the GTX 650 Ti which it replaces so, as I said, I do have all of this in a table comparison, which will make it a lot easier for you guys rather than me reading everything, but I certainly will read out some of the stuff. Um, it's got 960 shaders, that's CUDA cores, of course, and we're looking at, of course, GDDR5 memory, 2 gigabytes of that, on a bus width of 128 bits, which kind of sucks actually and i'll go into that more in just a moment with a 1350 megahertz um core clock so that gives you a bandwidth of only 86.4 gigs and as i said we'll investigate that further in just a moment now the configuration of the actual gpu is fairly curious because nvidia have loaded this sucker with tons of shaders 960 as i stated which is considerably more than the previous uh, graphics cards like the 650 ti for example but you've only got 16 rops but you've got 80 tmus so how this basically works is that you've got a lot of um, you've got a lot of you've got a lot of texture fill rate, but in terms of pixel fill rate, it's not doing too hot. And in terms of bandwidth, well, that's going to be an issue as well. Now the actual GPU core clock is actually pretty high. It's uh, just under eleven hundred. Uh, so guys, just caught my cup there. It's just under 1100 megahertz, uh, 1098 to be precise, which is not too bad. And as you would expect, the GPU does support GPU Boost 2.0, CUDA, DX, OpenGL, hardware, physics, and all the other bits and pieces you would expect. In terms of raw performance, however, it gets absolutely thrashed by the r9 260x for example and it's just about beating the hd 7770 um, and is a little bit faster than the uh, gtx 650 ti now of course most of these are synthetic but with a score of 3170 on fire strike and 3D Mark 11 only getting 4,188. Obviously, all this stuff is in screenshots, so you can check that out in the article. It's not exactly going to astound you. Now, I think primarily the issue here is it just doesn't have enough bus width. Um, the bus width is really sucky, and as I've stated uh, in the article itself, the problem with this is even if you do overclock the memory, um, let's say for example you manage to get it to 1400 megahertz or 1450 or something along those lines, the issue is that you're only scaling with a 128 bit bus and it's just not going to push you that far. I mean, like 5800 megahertz is only like uh, around 92 gigabytes per second, roughly, which is pretty minimal i mean if you were to compare that for example the 650 ti boost which is boasting 192 bit memory bus and 144 gigabytes per second you could see how there's some problems there and definitely lack of rops and fill rate is is going to hamper this so it's a really interesting card in that respect i'm somewhat surprised the video have decided to go so low in terms of bus width 
to be honest with you. I I actually expected this card to be 192-bit bus, maybe. Uh, I didn't quite expect it to be uh, 128, but there you have it. So where does this leave you? Well, if you've been waiting for this as like, you know, a messiah for a low GPU, low, uh, low cost GPU, you're probably not going to be that happy. It's not bad from what I'm looking at. It's a little bit better than the previous generation, but it's certainly not a huge leap in performance. So in CPU terms, it would be more of a tick rather than say a tock. So as I said, nothing particularly astounding. Performance is roughly what was expected given the original leaks of performance, which I've also linked to in the description, um, sorry, in the article. But it's not bad. It's honestly not bad. It's just not possibly what some people are expecting or hoping for. Anyway, I'm going to get going. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care, my friends. Bye for now.